Good afternoon. We're coming to you this Tuesday afternoon with a Bible study called The Climax of Preparation. The Climax of Preparation. We'll be coming out of Ephesians 6. And we know that Ephesians 6, 10, where I'll be point of reference, and we'll, we'll, we'll start at Ephesians 6, 10. It says, finally, which means from henceforth, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And it was saying, my brother, be strong, be empowered. Why does he want you from henceforth to be empowered of his might? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able, and he answers the question, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Withstand, withstand. So because wiles means trickery. And so what Jesus was using Paul to tell us here, that we need to stand empowered against Satan's deception, deceit, and the things that Satan was going to do. Our title is The Climax of Preparation. So we're preparing for something called the evil day, which is some powers coming upon the face of the earth that Paul told us in Hebrews that God has shaken the earth, but this time, the next time around, he's going to shake the very powers of heaven. And what is going on is that there is an onslaught every which way you look. You've got to come to the conclusion, if you are a Christian, that there is a demonic movement happening in the earth realm right now. Very demonic. I'm 65 years old. I've seen some things that I morally could say to myself would never would have happened uh, when I used to go to church with my grandmother, she used to tell me that before the end of time, you barely would be able to find a man. I used to think, I would look around and I used to think as a little boy, I said, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Until one day I went to and asked her, why do you say that before the end of time, it would be scarcely to find a man? She said, because when you go to the Bible, God Almighty defines a man as the image and likeness of him having dominion to subdue the works of his hands. Not a breath and a pearl pants, not a person that goes out and earns a living, but a man. And one is one that has the character the likeness, the image of God Almighty and a relationship with Him. When now I look at what my grandmother was telling me, men are scarce, but you can find a breath and a pearl pants anywhere, standing anywhere. And I'm not trying to insult anybody, but I'm just trying to tell the truth because, well, the United States used to have moral values in leadership, you had to meet a qualification. Now those values are gone. Our nation is so torn up, we can't even have a civil conversation. Races are divided. They are marching in the street. And there's no love for the neighbor. But we say. We love God. And we love ourselves. But the love. That Jesus required. For the other person called your neighbor. Is not there. So we're sitting here with Paul telling us. To be able to stand. Which means we'll stand. The trickery of Satan. And so forth, therefore, the same author of Ephesians, God also 
told Paul to tell us without love, you can speak in all tongues, but without love, nothing's no good. There is demonic activity in a place where it ought not to be. It's called the church. Because we are actually saying, we are actually saying, that we can go to church, pay our tithe, listen to the pastor, read the Bible, but we ain't got to love those children that's in the cage at the border. We ain't got to love that person that's a different color than I am. I ain't got to love that poor because I'm rich. I don't have to love that person because I don't understand them. In other words, we are rewriting. Let me say it again. We are rewriting. The revelations of the word of God. And we are not disciplining ourselves. To live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So we are not equipped in ourselves. Disciplining ourselves. Becoming a disciples of Jesus Christ. Where we may reprove. Where we may correct. Where we may be instructed. To where we don't even have enough power. To examine ourselves to prove whether or not we are of the faith. And so when we go to this passage, it's real important in this passage because God knew the severity of the season we were going to stand in. So he told us to put on all the armor. He equipped us, supplied us, distributed to us through the spirit in the word. The armor that we may stand against the adversary, that we may stand against the principalities, that we may stand against the rulers of darkness, that we may stand and be victorious and more than conquerors. And so far, we haven't been able to keep our load from whites and cold one for Another. We've entered into the church. We become the kingdom of the cults. Each label loves their own name brand. It's like almost real stylish fashions. I got a label and I love those that are in my house. And I got a label and I love those that are in my house. And I love my pastor and I love my pastor and I love my ethnic group of people and I love my race of people and I'm with him and I'm with her and I'm with them. Who's with Christ? The question would be, so we're standing here at Ephesians 16 with God telling Paul to ask us, to equip ourselves to be soldiers to stand against the onslaught of what Satan was going to do. If we read the report, if we heard the report, if we keep the report, we put the armor on. And not only did he ask us to put the armor on, then he said pray. We got to rightly divide this because we are in violation of being disciplined to be used by Jesus Christ to stand against Satan to do anything unless we recover, repent, and ask God to forgive us for allowing Satan to steal the love that a Christian is supposed to have, the peace that a Christian is supposed to have, the joy that a Christian is supposed to have. The commission and the work that a Christian was supposed to do that Jesus did. The things that Jesus left, the people called the church to do. We have allowed Satan's trickery to steal the very fabric of the assignment, the commission, so the purpose cannot be unleashed. So we cannot stand, which means to stand against, 
because we're not empowered to stand against because we have listened to the interpretation of man. We have become labels and we have become satisfied with our habit of going to church and we have not become what Jesus died on the cross and prepared us to be and that was to become the church. We've got a fashion of going to church but we have not become the temple of the living God. We've not become the church. So therefore, Satan in his wiles has stripped the church of her armor. Let's talk. Oh yeah, let's talk. You know I'm telling the truth. If the Spirit of God is in you, and we now have time to be an overcomer and overcome the things that I'm talking about, if you read, you hear, and you keep the words of this book, you can be doubly blessed. I'm coming from the Bible. And if I'm describing you, you are not standing. You are being overtaken. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, in this call, in the name of Jesus, first and foremost, Father, Lord, we come to you to say thank you. Father, Lord, I say, Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. Open hearts, open souls, open minds. Give us wisdom and let us sell it not, Father, because there's so much going on in the earth realm. The horses are riding. There's a famine of hearers in the word in the land. Father, and then there's people being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And there are people that don't want to discipline themselves to obey every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God because time has stolen it, because Satan world have given them the bling bling and the American dream. And they're taking their time that they're supposed to be dividing to give to you, to keep you first. They're giving it to their own appetite. So they don't have time to get in the armor. So they are falling because they don't have the armor to stand against the wiles of Satan. Help us, Lord Jesus, help us. Forgive us for our laziness and our slowness. Forgive us for not having zeal to study your word. Forgive us for not having an understanding of what to pray for and how to pray. Lord, I ask that you pull down knowledge and understanding from heaven now. Seal and saturate our hearts with the latter rain that we may produce the fruit that the Holy Spirit is supposed to produce, that we may run this race because, Father, we need love, which is the first ingredients of the fruit of the Spirit, is the ingredients of the character of Jesus Christ, and what you ask us to have to be able to maneuver, to carry out our assignment, to exercise our assignment. So, Father, we cannot do it without love. I don't know why we try. But, Father, teach us through understanding. It's just vanity. When we try to do something any other way than the way that Jesus Christ asked us to, it's just vanity, vanity, which will come to naught. Father, help us, Lord Jesus, for this is your servant, friend, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's rightly look at this thing. I'm going to read what he gave you to withstand and to have you empowered to withstand Satan's tactics. But this is not really why I'm here. The climax of why we're really here is something called prayer. Because, see, when God asked you to put on all the armor, <coughs> he supplied you with divine armor. But when it changes and when it climaxes after you get all the armor that he outlined, then he switches it back to him, and then he says, and pray in the spirit. When he switches it to him, he say, after you get in the armor, I need you to look towards me because I'm the God that can empower things to be changed. I'm the God that can change situations. I'm the God that can put bloodlines back on track. I'm the God that can move cursed man and bring in healed man. I'm the God with everlasting life. He says, so when you get out in the old armor, the climax of Ephesians 6 is when he says, and then pray. 
He brings himself because you can't pray to the Father without the Son, without decreeing the Word, without declaring the Word. So we're going to go into this book and we want to pull out the meat of the fabric because if you believe that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know you want to be a Christian and you have faltered in standing against Satan and his demons and his principalities and his wiles. And you know you're not standing against anything. You're crumbling. You have not even been a good enough disciplined disciple that you have even allowed the Holy Spirit to produce the love you need. Not only the love you need for yourself. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. Let's see, Lord, just a minute. If any man or any woman had any kind of love for themselves and God's love has produced salvation, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If God has showed an act of his love and a man or woman read John 3, 16, to be sure, they would love themselves enough to allow their love to meet God's love to save them that they might not perish but have everlasting life. Do I need to say that again? Let's back up. Let's rehash. I'm in a dying state because my body, my dirt vessel, what you are looking at over Facebook, over social media, what you are looking at is decaying, is cursed. It came from the dirt of the earth. It is a vessel that can only be a vessel of honor if you house the treasures of God in it. But if you don't house the treasures of God in it and it's not redeemed, this old body going to get old. But let's separate the soul, Ezekiel 18, 4, that's on the inside, Psalms 23, that God wants to restore because the soul came from him. And his will is that all souls be saved. So that means the soul, which is a spirit, is quickening the dirt flesh, the body, to have life, but only have life in the natural. But oh boy, when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, when the Holy Spirit moves in and energizes the, the soul to allow the Holy Spirit to lead it into all truth, to allow the Holy Spirit to produce the fruit. To allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the word. And then man, and then man, and then man will read the Holy Scriptures. Hear the Holy Scriptures. Keep the Holy Scriptures. Then mankind is not in a fallen state, but they're in what you call a regenerational state. And it ain't regenerating the dirt on the outside, but it entered in on the inside. And when it entered in on the inside, it began to do a new work on the inside. That's why Psalms 23 says, he restored it. My soul. So if you love yourself, you will let Jesus on the inside to restore your soul that you may have the life Jeremiah 29, 11, you may have the life that God said he had plans for you to have. Let me say that again. Jeremiah 29, 11, God said, I know the plans that I have for you, plans of peace and not of evil. And therefore, he said, if you want to receive what I expect of you and receive, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Because of my love for you, I presented my son. For your love for yourself, meet my son that he may save you. But instead, we ain't got enough love to love ourselves. We got our eyes on this temporary American dream. We got our eyes on ourselves. We got on our eyes on what we do. And we do not have our eyes on what God is doing to try to rescue lost humanity. Oh, we think we are human beings. We think we are black, white, red, green, and I ain't trying to bring race into it, but I am. But we are 
We're actually spirits. We just got a different color of vessel on the outside. But the vessel on the outside, hear me somebody, please God Almighty. The vessel on the outside is not going to heaven. And the soul on the inside has no race. The soul on the inside does not have a race. It is a spirit. When you take that step next to death and you slide over into death, you will pull off whatever race you are and that soul is going to stand up. It's going to be neither male nor female, Greek nor Jew. That's right. And you are here with an epiphany, fooling yourself thinking you are better than him. Or you are less than because of whatever color your dirt is. Don't humor yourself. You, Satan has already tricked you. That's why in the church, it's not about the outside. It's about what you let and do on the inside. And ain't no man can put a race on that. You understand what I'm saying? So therefore, you you haven't loved yourself as a Christian to even get the information God has given me to give to you so far. You 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 think that I just come up here every Tuesday, every Thursday, every Sunday because that's just something I do. I'm here to tell you that the love of God in me is trying to win souls. I'm trying to edify somebody. I'm trying to lift somebody up. I'm trying to tell somebody standing in the dark, there's a light coming from heaven. It's called salvation. Jesus is the author of it. And his love for you to go all the way to the cross and die and be resurrected is there for you if you want it. If you love yourself and you realize there's more to life than just what you see and what you buy from the car dealership, what you buy from the clothes dealership, what you buy from the makeup dealership, what you buy from the Stacey Adam man, if you realize there's more to life than that, then I'm here to tell you what I just mentioned, the, the Stacey Adams and the makeup and the pocketbooks and the 401k, those are earthly things. I'm here to talk to you about how do you get to heaven? Because the American dream, if nobody ain't told you, I want to tell you today, is temporary. When your feet step over in the death and only God knows when he appoints that, you're done. You live time preparing for where you're going to go. If you think I'm joking, read Luke 16, where the rich man and the poor man so both were required of the Lord. And one wound up in one place and one wound up in another place. Let us go ahead on and get to the subject. We want to get on down to where Ephesians 18 says. And we, he said, I'm going to read it right quick. Find my brother, 16. Find my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He wants you to stand against it. He wants you to withstand Satan. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So we're supposed to have an understanding that we, we, we don't fight people. We fight spirits and principalities and rulers of darkness and spiritual witnesses in high places. 13. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand it. In, and he's talking about a season. He says, in the evil day, having done all to stand, having done all to withstand him, because if you don't withstand Satan, you can't become an overcomer. You have to withstand Satan's antics to become an overcomer, and an overcomer is one that has the victory. An overcomer is one that loves himself enough to receive the love of God and overcomes being in prison by Satan, overcomes thinking by flesh, by the world and by Satan, and becomes a servant of the living God. Okay, moving on. Stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth. He says, stand with your loins girded with the truth. What truth? The truth of the word of God. Having a breastplate of righteousness. What righteousness? Jesus Christ. Because he's the only one that got righteousness. We built the rights. 
and the, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Because the gospel of peace rests is on Isaiah 9. The gospel of peace rests on the government of Jesus Christ, the wonderful counselor, the prince of peace. So therefore, we're saying, 16 and above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of with the wicked. Now that's important, so I need to talk, stop the sea line. Fiery darts are the thoughts that Satan sends at your mind. The fiery darts that Satan shoots, they are thoughts that he uses to penetrate your mind, to give your mind an appetite either of the flesh, either of the world, or of him. Either one you act upon when that fiery dart enters in is going to produce sin. The flesh will want you nothing towards God except for to be a vessel to house God's treasure. The, the world is built by Satan because it robs you of your time. It deceives you and makes you think what's important. And you are only going through a fad because what you think is important called the American dream, which the school has taught you is important, is really not important to God. won't give you anything towards eternal life. So when we actually look, flesh, the world, and Satan is, is, is all in it together to give you a thought process, a continuous thought process to keep you enslaved to things that are temporary. So you can't be victorious. You can't stand against the wiles of the devil. If you are carried away with every dart he shoots or every thought he shoots that come from the flesh, from the world, or from him, every dart he shoots in your mind and you act upon it is a thought process that will not give you anything towards eternal life. Just keep you like a cat chasing their tail. Moving on. And take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Listen to what he says. That is why, one of the reasons why we are here. Because the sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit. And he answers it, what the sword of the spirit is. It says, which is the word of God. Now, when we move down here to 18, this is why we are here. Praying always, and here's how he tells you to pray. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Now, let's go back up. He says, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You notice he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. In the Spirit. Now, let's go back up one more time. Sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Okay, let's bridge this over. Let's bridge this over before we take out to John 6.63. Let's bridge this over to John 6.63. And I want to make, we're not going to be there long, so I'm going to read it for you. John 6.63. It is the spirit that quickens, which means give life. The flesh profits nothing. Let me read that one more time. It is the spirit that quickens the flesh. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. What does the word, which is spirit, which has life, what does it have power to do? We need to establish this. What does the word have power to do? Well, when you look at 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, here's what the word called the Holy Scriptures. The whole, all Scripture, all Scripture, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions, and for righteousness. The Holy Scriptures. So when he asked you, praying in the Spirit, seems to me that God is asking us that when we pray, give him his word back. Why do we decree and declare his word? Because
because his word has the power to reprove your life, to reprove your child's life, to reprove your neighbor's life, to reprove your husband and your wife's life, and to set bloodlines back on track by correcting the actions of that one over there that you can't change, but when you declare the word of the Lord, which is the sword of the spirit, which is your defense mechanism, when you pray in the spirit, when you give God his word back, it was God who said not one jot or one tittle of my word will fall to the ground. It must accomplish what I sent it to do. It's God's word. Mary had a little lamb, I don't think. We'll help you. It has no power. The only book that is alive and sharper than a two-edged sword, that is a weapon unto you that gives you the power to withstand the wiles of Satan. The only defense mechanism is your sword of the spirit and your shield of faith. But now, we bring in the climax of preparation. We're going to bring in prayer. And what prayer? When he said pray in the spirit, we need to get an understanding. John 6, 63 just says, the flesh profits you nothing. So whatever the flesh asks God is a mist. It's a mist. I, I, hey, number one is, the devil is a lie. Don't let people, I'm not going to let people sit up and, and say that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say they're not praying right. You keep exercising your prayer to God move on you. What my job is to do is to discipline you according to the word of God. You will notice that I'm reading the word of God. So, so don't let the devil get in your mind and trick you into believing that I'm talking to you. I'm teaching you what God said because that's my job. Let's move on because I ain't got time to stay there. There's an importance of prayer. And he's telling us, after you have put on all the armor that you may withstand, Satan, I need for you to report to me. But the way that I need for you to report to me is in the spirit because any other way will profit you nothing. It is ordained of God that None of his creatures should be independent of him. None of us should be independent of him. But get this now. John 1.1 1, 1 says, I read it, I heard it, and I keep it. John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and where it was with God, the word is God. So when you decree, when you're praying in the spirit, when you give God his word, you're giving him what he said. It is him that must watch over his word. It is us that decree and declare his word. The word is on the pages of the Bible. What the Bible needs is a man or woman to say, here I am, Lord, send me, that will pick the Bible up and decree and declare a word. That God may go to work in behalf of what the word was that was spoken as an utterance into the earth atmosphere. The word has to be spoken as an utterance into the earth atmosphere. Watch this. It is, it is ordained of God that none of his creatures should be independent of him. He's got to wake you up every morning. You've got his life in you. So if he's going to wake you up, why not go a step further and let him restore your soul? If you look up and say, God, like Paul did, Paul had a problem. He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, but yet he bowed his head and said, God, I need you because Satan has buffered me in my side. And I have these three thorns. And God then confessed to Paul, I heard you, Paul. I heard you. My grace is sufficient for you. You keep doing what I divinely supplied you to do and I'll take care of your three thorns. Let's move on. We are under the necessity of receiving continual com supplies from him, acknowledging him from day to day. The one source of all our benefits, God Almighty is the one source 
of all our benefits. So therefore, in addition to the armor to which we, the Christian, are arrayed from head to foot, praying in the spirit is the medium of communication between God and man. Praying in God's word. See, because the word will not get up off the page and proclaim itself. God has to have a man or a woman or a boy or a child to take God's word, which is spirit, which is life, which quickens you, which is your defense mechanism. God has to have a man that will stand in the gap, that will study the word, that will take that word and decree an utterance into the earth atmosphere. It is that whereby man ascends to God and make known to him his wants, whatever makes him be able to stand and the needs of. God the only giver of every good and perfect gift. And his directions were simply this. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. That's his, that was his directions. It goes along with what John and the gospel of John says, if you abide in Jesus and Jesus abide in you, you may ask anything in his name and he will do it for you. Let me tell you what the direction was one more time, because you must inherit. it. He said, praying in the spirit. He says, Ask, and ye shall have. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. It is important to understand, praying in the Spirit in Ephesians 6, 18, not only for our own protection, but for all the saints. The battle is one we fight together. The battle is one that we fight together because the love of God given to each us, us, Lord, is in it together. We got one love, and that love is from heart to heart. We're not fighting separately. I'm not in my building over there. I'm not in my color over here. I'm not in my race over there. I'm not under my pastor over there. We are under the directions of God Almighty through the saving of Jesus Christ. And we are under the revelation and the sealing of the Holy Spirit. And we are not long rangers. We are in this thing together. We don't, we're not cannibals. We don't hate each other. We look out for one another. The prayers not, must not be routine mumblings. For the soldier, Christ is to be alert while praying. That's why he asked us to watch. For the soldier is to be alert while praying. Soldiers of Christ receive their discipline through the exercising, the drills, the laying on of hands, the strength, power, and discipline through prayer and supplication. Praying in the spirit. Let's write this. Let's talk about that a minute. Means for more than praying in tombs. It means praying in communion with the Holy Spirit. When you look over in the presence of the Holy Spirit, when you look over in Romans 8, 26, let's go there. Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, which means our weaknesses. It says, For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts of Know it, what is the mind of the Spirit? Because he makes an intercession for the saints according to the will of God. How do we carry out the will of God? By the Word. 
We live by every word, Matthew 4, 4. We live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And it is the word of God, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, that gives us the power to reprove our life, to reprove the lives of ones we don't see. It is the word of God that gives us the power to correct that life that we see that we need changing, to correct that thing that's on us that we see that we need changing, to tell God about that thing that we can't overcome, to ask for forgiveness because he said we could have it. It is the word of God that instructs us, that equips us, that divinely supplies us with the needed material divinely sent by God. It is the prayers of the word of God that decrees what God will supply us with and give God a license to interfere in earth realm and divine things that you watch and give him as you pray his word back to him, decreeing his word back to him. Let's move on. It says, a, spirit, a spiritual understanding. Our eyes must be open to understanding by the Son of God. Whereby to discern the things of the Spirit. By the Spirit you may be guided unto all truths. By the Spirit. Because the world cannot receive the Spirit of truth. And the Bible is the word of truth. By the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of truth. It leads you into the things of God. To discern the things of the Spirit, by the Spirit you may be guided into all truth. It is the Spirit that quickens, which makes alive, the flesh, John 6, 63, profits nothing. We go into church services all the time. We're going to ask the praise team to come up. And you have our people giving a hand clap of praise. But if their heart... If God searches the heart, because he don't like the lip drawing close to him, and it ain't in the heart. If God searches the heart, and it's not in your heart, that praise that's worthy to be given him in spirit and in truth, he's not going to take what the flesh produces. He's not going to take what the flesh produces. But we will be in, the church is being torn up by the deception of what Satan is doing. We're not standing against the wiles of Satan. So we must not have heard God. We must not have read it. We must not have heard it. And we must don't keep it. When God told us we need all the armor because Satan is not going to come overpowering you. Satan is going to come deceiving you. I've never seen like the people. The Q movement is a million strong. We've got 34,000 different labels and each one say I got a way to heaven. When Jesus has already told us there is no man can enter in the sheep gate but by him. Yet and still we think we can go to heaven without love. We think we can go to heaven and putting people in cages. And because our children is not in the cage, we'll find that's a little selfish. My heart goes out to all mankind. Because God has produced a love in my heart for enough for my enemy. Do I get mad with my enemy? Yes, I do. But I love him enough to have God have mercy on him. Because when God said that when they receive my teacher, preacher, when he see, receive my righteousness, they have received me. When they reject you, they have rejected me. My love for even my enemy will say, God have mercy on them for they know not what they do. That's right. But he told me when I come to your house, if you receive me not, shake the dust from my feet and move on. And it would be better that you was in Sodom and Gomorrah once I leave your house. I'm at your house today. I'm knocking today. I'm planting seeds today, trying to tell you love yourself enough to allow God's love to meet your love for yourself. To save you and give you salvation. This is Pastor Samson said we'll see you Thursday.